Picture this. Local greens produced without sunlight, without soil, and without pesticides, completely indoors, every day, right here in the city. It might sound like sci-fi, but it's all real. And it all starts right here. Welcome to Factories of the Future. Today, we're at Uns Farms, located in the heart of Al Quds in Dubai where farming meets futuristic innovation. I'm Rachel Dawson, Senior Correspondent at Fast Company Middle East, and we're joined by Mehla Murtaza, Executive Director at Uns Farms. Welcome, Mehla. Welcome to the farm. Where does it all begin? So it begins exactly where we're standing. The you can say our production is broken down into five segments. Firstly, we are starting with the seeding and the media preparation. Then it goes into our germination. Then it goes into the nursery. Then it goes to the main production. And at the end of it all, we enjoy the fruits of our labor, which is the harvesting. So do you want to take us on a quick tour of your vertical farm? Sure. So as I said, the whole process begins over here with the seed preparation and seeding. Then it goes into our dark phase germination, as you see over here. That's where it goes into a simulation like it's underground in the soil. So in this dark phase is where the root first begins to develop, the seed starts to sprout outside. And uh, it's kind of the uh, first stage of the growing process when the plant actually develops. And is it standard for all seed types or the, the waiting period? So uh, again, depending on our variety of plants, it's uh, taking between one to three days for the seed to sprout and for us to transport it into our nursery area over here. This is uh, the stage three of the production. This is where we have our nursery and uh, we also combine it with our herb production area. So taking it uh, more closer look to the sprouted plants over here, you can see that we are also growing this variety in a hydroponic medium. So there's no usage of soil for these plants in particular, but you also have a lot of varieties like what you see behind you, which is growing in potted soil because that is the best solution for that plant. We do have a huge array of sensors, which actually monitors 16 different variables of the growing process. You know, that goes from the normal things such as the air temperature, the humidity, to things more specialized, such as the CO2 level in the air, the oxygen level in the water itself, and, uh, and these kind of uh, different parameters all have an effect on the plant. But because we're an indoor farm and we have a almost 100% total control on the environmental factors. We actually have a very, very accurate forecasting method. And uh, most of the time, you can say that the plant grows as expected mm -hmm. and as per the forecast. So now we enter our fourth phase of the production, which is actually broken up into four different growing zones. So where we are right now is the herb production area. Okay. So as I said, we do everything from the simple mint to the very, very high end uh, chocolate mint and lemon balm and any kind of exotic varieties, to be honest. Oh, wow. That's an explosion of flavors. It's the real taste, you can say, <laughs> fresh, freshly picked from the farm. That's lovely. In terms of our farm, we do about 25 different varieties of herbs. Okay. Uh, again, herbs are better suited to grow in soil because they have a much longer life on the, on, on the production stage. So they need more area to develop for the roots and for the different kind of uh, root structure, you can say. So now we come into our second production area, okay. which is our largest facility and the main hydroponic farm. We grow one ton of salads in the farm here on a daily basis. Right. And what we do is that we don't just grow a bag of lettuce. We mix in special kind of herbs from things of your spicy varieties. We do some of the superfoods like your kale, but in a baby form, so it's a lot more edible and a lot more intense in the flavor and even things such as uh, beet leaves. So this gives a natural flavor of beet, but without uh, being the actual vegetable. So we like to mix in a unique variety of flavors and make the salads interesting and fun to enjoy. Right. Uh, what we grow over here is with a completely hydroponic process. So as you can see, unlike the uh, uh, other kind of uh, crops we are growing, this is growing actually in water. So the oh, water wow. is very nutrient uh, rich. We work with a special computer system which manages a certain intensity of the nutrients and the acidity of the water. 
okay. all of this is kind of a simulation of soil and gives the same effect of soil in terms of the macro and micronutrients right and in terms of area how big is this farm so actually we are one of the biggest farms in the world so we actually have a total production area of more than 7000 square meters in a footprint which is one third uh, in terms of the land area so we're extremely space saving and we're extremely sustainable as well so i'm very curious to know how do you mimic air in the natural environment so as i said uh, we grow according to 16 different kind of variables to mimic the natural environment and one of them which is very important for the plant is the air movement so air movement actually helps the process of of respiration in the plant so the plant is uh, of course in a way in a layman's term is sweating so the air helps remove all that vapor from the from the leaf of the plant and gives it uh, extra room for the photosynthesis process to happen all of this is lettuce exactly so we actually grow four varieties of lettuce from which two are proprietary to our company only so what you see over here is actually our unsberg lettuce oh okay. so it's uh, got the crunch of an iceberg but the frilly shape uh, of uh, lolo bianda for example it is both crunchy sweeter and uh, in my opinion some of the best lettuce you might try in your life why a dedicated space to microgreens so what's actually started as a very small project uh, became a very integral part of our operations uh, uns farms actually the largest microgreen producer in the middle east we grow more than 35 types of microcress uh, both in a cut version and in a living pot based on the chef's desire and the freshness requirement. Now that we have explored a little bit of the macrogreen farm, let me take you to our final production zone for the edible flowers. Let's have a look. We're surrounded by so many different colors and the aroma here also is so strong. Thank you. Uh, I have to ask, what are the demands of flowering plants? If you'll notice, this location is much smaller than the other ones and the temperature is a lot cooler here. We actually maintain a climate between uh, 15 to 18 degrees for edible flowers. That's because edible flowers are mainly found in uh, valleys or cooler climates. I, well, that's where they flourish the best. So what we try to do is kind of simulate that climate, make sure it's a nice island climate, nice and cool. Uh, we have a special kind of lighting here as well, which is uh, simulating a sunrise, midday and sunset just to give the, uh, the plants a longer kind of daylight cycle. Mm -hmm. And that all ends up uh, making the plant basically more happier. Right. And when the flowers are happy, they bloom more, as you can see. We're here at the grand finale, and you can see the final point in the entire pr production process. So we went through the seeding, the germination, the nursery uh, and production. And finally, we are harvesting the fruits of our labor, no pun intended. <laughs> so uh, what you see here is the final stages where we do our intense quality check. We check each and every punnet. We make sure that they're free from any kind of issues or damages. And we make sure the customer receives as clean as a, as a, of a product as possible. In a world facing climate challenges, urban growth and water scarcity, vertical farms like this one offer a powerful solution. Zero five fourteen double oh one. And we're joined by Mahindra Murtaza, who's executive director at Unspa. Shall we take it again? I'm sorry, they're like, she's tired, I get it. <laughs> Give us a lowdown of the final step. <laughs> lowdown? <laughs> really? Okay, okay, okay. That would be a nice end clip. I just like flick it and it like <laughs> covers the camera.